I'm Miss Jane here in the culinary corner at Creative Discovery Museum, and I'm so excited to be cooking with you today. You know, today I thought instead of making something that might be a part of a meal, we'll make something that would be more of a snack, but maybe even a little more special than a snack. You know, if you're at home all day long, if you're like me, you love to snack and you kind of snack all day long. But what if the snack was actually a little meal? You know, in a lot of parts of the world, they stop in the afternoon, and instead of having a snack, they had tea time. So I thought today it might be fun to make something that would substitute for a snack and be more like tea time. Those tea times usually happen at three or four in the afternoon because that's such a long, there's such a long time between lunch and dinner. So to stop about three or four and have an intentional time to sit down and snack and call it tea, I thought that would be just a really good thing for us to look at today. So today we're going to make chapati and chai. Now chai is the Hindi word for tea. So there you go, tea time already made. And chapati is a flatbread that originated on the Indian continent. And um, we're making it here at the museum because it's also eaten a lot in Kenya. And of course, our exhibit is Kenya's Kids. So there you go, there's the connection. So, you ready to make tea time with me? Then the first thing that we're gonna do, as you know, is I'll wash the hands. We do that always before we start cooking. We're gonna start today with the chai tea. Now in this pot, I have four cups of water and I have black tea bags. These are bags of black tea. You would find it, it would look something like this in the grocery store. But you know, I've made this with decaffeinated tea, I've made it with herbal tea, I've made it with all kinds of different teas and it works. And by the way, just a tip to parents, if you're not a fan of caffeinated, highly caffeinated kids in the afternoon, this is a great way to go. Just use decaf tea. So this is simmering now. And to this, I'm going to add four cups of milk. Now you can use, I've even used almond milk with this, but you could use skim milk, 2% milk. I'm going with full fat version today because that's just kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but, so to use four cups, we can either use four of these one cup measures or two of these two cup measures. Again, getting a little math lesson in as we make this snack. So, we're going to, I'm choosing to use the two cup measure, so I'll just do two of these. And remember, it's the same amount of milk as it is water. So it's half milk and half water in those five tea bags. So we're just going to put that milk in and let it um, steep. That's the word that you call it when hot liquids just kind of um, stay hot together. And we especially use that term steep when we're talking about tea. Oh, that already looks gorgeous. The color of that's amazing. So now it's time to make the chapati. And chapati, as I said, has just flour and salt. Let you see the salt label and water in it. It's amazing how it comes together in the most magical way to make a delicious flatbread. So we're gonna start with the flour and we need two cups. Now with flour, what you wanna do is spoon it kind of lightly into a cup and you wanna put more in the cup than you actually think you need. And then you take a flat edge. This is just the other side of a, of a little knife and you're going to level that off. Flour is a really tricky thing. You can't just add just randomly. You have to be pretty exact when you measure flour and do baking. So there's one, and then here's the second cup coming our way. So again, it's just two cups of flour, spoon lightly, and put a little more than you think you need, and then level that little cup off. Here you go. All right, just level it off and put it in. 
Then the, uh, the next ingredient is just one teaspoon of salt. And a little trick here is don't ever pour salt over the bowl that you're gonna mix in because guess what can happen? And guess what's happened to me? You get too much salt because it spills out. So if you pour it over a sink or over a paper towel, whatever, see what I mean? Um, whatever happens with that extra just goes in the sink. And again, you wanna level this off because salt's another one of those things that, that can be really tricky. You want just the right amount. So now that I have salt and flour in the bowl, then I whisk it together. And notice I didn't say mix, I said whisk. You want to use a whisk for this for two reasons. Number one, whisking is really fun. There's nothing like holding a whisk in your hand. But the real reason, the scientific reason, because you know there's a lot of science in cooking, but the real reason is you want to aerate this flour and you want it to, if you were just using a spoon to mix it, it might get more clumpy, but with this, you really want to aerate it. And so you just aerate it and make sure that that salt and flour is mixed together. And now it's time for the liquid. Now with the liquid, notice I have a cup of water here, but I didn't measure this cup of water very carefully because I'm not gonna use the whole thing. This is sort of the art of cooking. What I'm going to do, and I'm just gonna use my hands to mix this, which is so much fun. Um, I'm just gonna pour a little bit of the water in, and then I'm gonna take my hand and mix that together because the goal is to make a dough that's the right consistency. And if I put all this water in at one time, likely the dough would be too wet. It would be so wet that we couldn't knead it. And that's what we're getting ready to do in just a minute, is we're gonna knead this dough. So we keep on going just with the water. And I notice I'm pouring a little bit in. The word I would use to describe this is gradually pouring. It takes a little patience to do this. Cooking is good for a lot of reasons. Not only is it math and science and art, but it also teaches building character because guess what? Not everything turns out exactly the way you want it to all the time. So you have to be a little patient with it. And then some of the hot processes that you're using, you have to be patient with also. Ooh, this is coming together really nicely. Look, see, and oh, how fun that is. It's still a little too dry. Let's keep on going. We wanna make it wet enough that it gets all of the flour in there. And um, again, if you get this too wet, it's really not a disaster. You just add a little more flour, but you really don't wanna do that because then the ratio of salt and flour gets a little bit off. So you really want to just take it easy with that flour, uh, I mean with the water when it goes in and just keep working it until you get this nice, soft dough. It should be about the consistency of Play-Doh um, when it's the right consistency. And oh, look at this, is that not amazing? I just love it on my hands, it feels so good. I mean, cooking couldn't be any more sensory, could it? Not only do you get to feel the food, but you smell it when it's cooking and we're getting ready to cook this stuff, um, in just a minute. This, and by the way, this is a really quick snack to make. Um, and you know, if you wait until you're really hungry to start making this snack, it's gonna taste so much better because hunger is really the best flavor there is. When you're hungry and you eat, food just tastes so much better. So um, I would wait until you get hungry for a snack to start making this because it really does go pretty quickly and it sort of occupies your time while you're waiting on that food. All right, this is just about the right consistency. You know what, I might do just, it's a little crumbly though. I might put just a touch more because there's still a little bit of flour left in this bowl and I wanna try to pick all that flour up. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. All right, now, see how I have a ball of dough here and if I work it enough, it can kind of hold together. Now I'm going to use a paper towel to get a little bit of the dough off of my hands because if you use just water, it just makes it gooier. And I'm not through having um, doughy hands yet. 
So just get enough off so that I can take my spoon and put just a little bit of flour out on this surface. And I'm gonna spread that flour around. Now the flour is gonna keep the dough from sticking. So here's our ball of dough. Isn't that not gorgeous? I mean, I just love it. And then what you're gonna do is knead this. Again, it's a really sensory thing. If you wanna use proper kneading technique, you flatten it out and then you fold it over and you flatten it out. But really just kind of playing with it works just as well, especially for this. But you wanna knead it to get it pretty smooth. And by the way, while I'm kneading this, let me let you know that I have a pan on the stove. And of course, this is definitely a part that is um, for parents to supervise. But I have a, a pan on the stove, kind of a skillet really. And um, it has a little bit of canola oil in it. And I have gotten it very hot. So this cooks extremely quickly. So, got a really good dough here. Look, I mean, wow, this is awesome. And so what we're gonna do is divide it into four sections. Now, four sections, again, let's do our math means that we take the dough and divide it in half. Love that squeezy, that's awesome. And then we can divide each half, make another little ball and divide that in half. And you're gonna end up with four pretty equal pieces because if you're making this for brothers and sisters, take my word for it, you want the pieces to be equal so that nobody says, yours is bigger than mine. I don't know that you've ever heard that at your house, but I have definitely heard it at mine on more than one occasion. So we're gonna take this little ball of dough and we're gonna flatten it a little bit more. In fact, we're gonna flatten it um, pretty well. And your, again, your dough should be stiff enough that it's not gonna stick to your hands anymore. Just flatten it out. And really, the, the flatter you get it, the quicker it will cook. It should look about like this. So kind of like a thick pancake. Now, we're going to put this into a really hot skillet. Ooh, I smell this guy. He smells really good. So while he's cooking, we're gonna put one more in. And again, your skillet needs to be hot enough that you really hear the sizzle. Just as, again, is a job that has to be supervised by parents. Um, and, and you're gonna cook this just until the edges get a little bit brown. Now, while these guys are finishing up, we're gonna come over here back to the chai tea. Remember, we had four cups of water, five tea bags. We let all that boil for just a minute, and then we turn the heat down and we put in four cups of water. And now, guess what? We are going to add three-fourths cup of sugar to that. Now, three-fourths cup is not a whole cup, right? It is one half of a cup. And I'm going to use a fourth of a cup because a half plus a fourth is three-fourths. You know, you could almost do this in college and math lesson for the day. And then we're just going to let that sugar dissolve. Just stir it. The tea bags are still in it. Just stir it around and let that sugar dissolve in there. Gonna come back over to the chai. I mean, sorry, to the chapati. Ooh, look at that. That's exactly what you want. You want it kind of dark there. Now, in some parts of the world, um, and some cooks prefer to cook their chapati dry. And so it wouldn't necessarily have oil in it. In some parts of the world, they might use the oil in the dough, but we chose it to do this, uh, to do ours this way. And you know, that's the great thing about cooking is it's an art. You get to sort of make it up the way that you want to, because even though the traditional chapati doesn't have anything other than salt in it, that yet you can put all kinds of herbs in this or spices and just change it up change up that basic recipe. So we're gonna let these cook just a little bit longer and you can see um, this gets a little bit dry. And, um, and again, you might wanna experiment with the thickness of this that you like. 
and see if you like yours thicker or thinner. And that, while that finishes up, it's almost there. I am going to ladle some of this delicious chai into my cup. Look at that color. I mean, that it is. This is some good stuff. You will love this. And again, just a reminder, you can make this with um, all kinds of teas, even though it won't necessarily be the traditional chai, it's still your chai. So you can make it all kinds of ways. Um, so here we go. We're back over with the chapatis. That one's done. Again, look at that color. Now it's kind of dripping. So what you're going to want to do for sure is put this on a paper towel and let it drain. Let that oil drain out of it. We'll let this one finish while it's still cooking. I'm going to put this on, put it on two sides there to drain for just a minute, maybe even press it a little bit to get some of the oil out. And then I'm going to take that chapati and put it on a really pretty plate. And I'm going to actually, let's just turn this oven off. You never want to leave, or the stove off. You never want to leave the stove on when we're not standing right there. So we're going to take our chapati and our tea over to our table because again, this is going to be a really wonderful snack time where we're not just eating mindlessly in front of the television. We're actually going to sit down and eat with someone and have a conversation, which means we also use a napkin in our lap, uh, practicing a little special manners here and take our chapati. Now, again, it's more traditional to eat the chapati just as chapati or maybe even with beans or, and this certainly can be used as a meal. But again, because we're doing the art of cooking and I'm making the chapati my own, I love a little butter on this. I love a little butter on everything. Actually, I love a lot of butter on everything. And um, I even put some jam out here. Again, not traditional at all with chapati, but delicious. And then I take a bite. Mm. The texture of that is delicious. It's just a little bit chewy and just tastes like great bread. And then the chai tea. Oh, it is so good. It's milky and sweet and still has that little tea flavor. And um, again, parents, it can be decaffeinated if you choose. So thank you so much for cooking with me today and happy tea time, everybody.